Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night, The Fox's Tale. Uh, another edition of the show and another ex-Leicester player to come on and chat to you follow Leicester fans. Uh, as always, get your comments in below. Uh, let's get ready for The Fox's Tale on a Wednesday night. As always, uh, we'll start off, we'll get the man in who's been at the club. He was at the club for one full season. Uh, he made a lasting impression on the football club in that fit, fit season. Uh, came from Notts County for uh, 1.25 million. Uh, was a big ask fee at the time. Uh, we'll get him, Mark Draper. Good evening, Hi. Mark. Hi, Tom. You all right? Yeah, good. Thanks to yourself. Yeah, all good. Thanks, mate. Good, good. Well, let's start the same question we asked most of our ex-players. Uh, what did Brian Little talk to you about and tell you the football club at Leicester when you first signed? Um, I think as soon as I met Brian, um, uh, he had a good good feel about him, you know, warm, friendly bloke. And obviously, I knew his reputation in the game as a player and a manager. And I, had, I spoke to a couple of other clubs, but as soon as I got speaking to Brian, my mind was made up pretty quickly, really. I mean, you came to football club, we'd just been promoted into the premiership at the time. Uh, massive step for the football club itself. Uh, there's a, a lot, a lot. Of, I felt talented player. Did you feel that when you joined the club that the potential was there to stay in the league? Yeah, definitely. I think it was, um, I think they beat Derby in the playoff final. I watched that game. Um, there was enough a bit of talk about me going to Derby at the time, if they'd got promoted as well. So, um, but when, when Leicester went, I spoke to Brian. Like I said, my, my decision um, was quite an easy one to make in the end, to be honest. Brilliant. Now, I mean, so you played with some very good players. Like I say, Simon Grayson was at the football club, Mark Whitmo, uh, Walsh was at the football club. Uh, what was it like to be coming to the football club and uh, meet the Mr. Leicester, as he's known him as himself now, Walsh at the time? Yeah, no, I mean, it was great. I, I mean, I've been at Nos County from from nine years old, so um, it was a big wrench leaving there and a big decision for me to leave. Um, I think I was 20, 24 at the time, but literally with them being uh, at the training ground within within a few days, the lads were so friendly and um, I got on with Walsh and, and Joe, Jim and Spear, all the lads really, such a, such a friendly place and I felt, I felt at home literally within a few days of training to be honest and just settled in straight away. Brilliant. I mean, I know the, the, the season itself probably didn't turn out as planned, uh, relegation no. on the cards and anything. Where do you think the, the key moments for that season that it just didn't really click because it is the club for coming up? And I know it's always difficult when you've come up from the first, the old first division into the Premiership. It hadn't been around for that long, but I suppose by that point, there was a lot, still a lot of money floated around in the bigger end of the market. Yeah. Um I think I, I took all the transfer fund at the tribunal. To be honest, <laughs> I think I think Brian was um, was not expecting to pay as much um, at the time, so I think I took quite a bit of the kitty. So I think he was planning on spending a bit more. Um, a few reasons, really. I mean, for me, when I'm looking back, I I I think the biggest we started okay, um, but I think the injuries to Walsh and Joachim, a vital part of the season, was. Um, was a massive blow for us. Then obviously Brian um, leaving for Villa as well. Um, I mean, I think that was no, was that the end of November, December uh, of that season. So it's tough. It's tough because I don't think that they had a lot of Premier League experience within the group. And um, you know, maybe if they had a bit more money, one or two more signings um, might have kept us up. But like I say, definitely the injuries to Julian Joachim and Walsh were a massive, massive blow to us. Uh, question here, everyone get your question in, guys. You know, the, the, that's what we're here for. Your questions to ask to Mark. Uh, question from Rosal, what was your favourite game for Leicester despite the relegation? Um, I think the Tottenham game at home stands out. I think it was our first first win in the Premier League as well. We um, It was it was um, Tottenham's dream team when Jürgen Klinsmann was there and Sheringham, a uh, fantastic side. And we played fantastic that day. I think we won 3-1 in the end. Um, Jockey scored a couple of goals and I think Lowy got the third one. But um, we were outstanding and thoroughly outplayed them. And that was the first time, really, I thought we we realised that we're good enough to stay in this league. 
Uh, Keith, that's <laughs> a quickie one. Who's a better player, you or Gary Parker? <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a good, yeah, I still speak to Parks now and again. Now, Parks was a quality player. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Forest fan, so um, he was a, he was a great player at Forest. He could play wide, he could play midfield in the whole. Um, great lad as well, really funny. I, I, ended up, I ended up rooming him with a couple of times um, when before yeah, before um, before I left. But um, no, I'd still say me though. <laughs> uh, no question. Who was the joker and any stories in the dressing room? Um, to be fair, there was a few in there. I mean, David Speedy was a funny, funny lad. Uh, I mean, he was injured a lot of the time and sucked towards the later stage of his career when I was there. But, um, I mean, I weren't injured that much at Leicester, but the, the odd time I was injured, um, I think it, um, Smudger, the physios, who's still at Villa now, he, I think Walsh was injured as well and he'd leave us some um, stuff to do when he went out with the first team. I think it was supposed to go on a 20-mile like, bike ride um, and then... Occasionally, me, me, Speed, and Walsh had decided to go to the local cafe for a breakfast instead. <laughs> I don't think you'd get away with that nowadays, but, um, but that was Speedo's idea, not mine and Walsh's. Question again uh, Why did you leave Leicester? I think for me, I think it was financial, weren't it really? You, you, you were sold for 3.5 million or, you know, yeah. roughly around that kind of figure. What was a, a, a big amount of money for Leicester back in the day after relegation? and trying to recoup the finances of going to back down into Division 1, is it? Yeah, like I said, you know, Leicester had never had the millions and millions that Premier League clubs have. And like I say, I think if Leicester had stayed up, there's no doubt I would have, I would have stayed. Um, Villa tried to sign me on the deadline day. Um, and then we agreed that I'd, try and, I'd stay um, and try and help them stay off relegation. Um, that didn't quite happen. And then I think it was... Um, I mean, it was my decision as well, but I think a financial one for the club as well. Um, you know, they'd, they'd made over two million in a year on me, which, which in in them days was a massive amount of money, and they, they couldn't turn it down. I mean, halfway through the season, you mentioned earlier that uh, there was a change in management. Management. Uh, Brian Little went off to the Villa, uh, and in came Mark McGee. Uh, what was it like changing managers halfway through a season? Uh, is there a different style of play that Mark? brought into it or was it just try and do the same kind of stuff yeah i mean it was it was a tough it was a tough time really because i think the lads a lot of the lads have had a real good um a good bond with brian after what had happened with the promotions and the, you know the success they'd had the two or three years before so there's no there's no doubt about it for a while it, the, the club went a bit flat and we we're at that stage of the season we, we needed every point you could get and for a couple of months it was a little bit flat to be honest and it, by the end of that, it was too late for us to stay up. So, like I say, it was for me personally, you know, the reason I went there, as well as Leicester being a top club, um, Brian was one of the main reasons. And like I say, there's no doubt about it. It did go flat for a couple of months and we never really recovered. Uh, Facebook, you uh, do you regret leaving us, Mark? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I went on and had a fantastic time at Aston Villa, so I, I can't have any regrets, but... I was only at Leicester for a year, um, but we, we were chatting before, Tom, you know, when I look back, I, I've got a lot of fondness for Leicester, you know, it's, it's a great club, I've been back not many times, but um, a few times, and it always feels like to me when I, I was there for a lot longer than I was, it was a year, but it, it, um, it was still a very big and important part of my career. Uh, Keith Goddard said, who's the toughest player you played against? Um, God... Toughest, as in physically tough, or just, just. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. Well, let's go for yeah. it. The club when you're uh, training ground. Yeah, I mean, eff effective. Um, I mean, the best, the most talented player was Gaza for me. With that, without a doubt, was that actually watching the player on the pitch. Um, I can remember playing in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup for Notts County, and it's. I think that was the first time I've ever been on the pitch. Actually, thinking, you know, has he done that or um, that's unreal. Um, but I mean, tough, tough wise, probably Roy Keane. You know, just um, not flat or anything, but but so effective. Uh, I don't think people realised how powerful and how quick he was. And um, as an all-round player, I'd have to say Roy Keane. Uh, you got a handful of goals at Leicester. I think it was five in total. Uh, was there any worldies you remember? Um, 
for me, yeah, they're all worlders. <laughs> um, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed going against Forest, obviously, my own, my, my own club. Um, you know, a lot of lads I know follow Forest. So it was, it was nice, even though they were the team I followed as a kid, it was nice to score against, against Forest. Uh, always remember my first goal, my first goal in the Premier League, first goal, um, which was away at Everton against Neville Southall, which, which sticks in my mind. Um, but I don't think any of them were actual worlders, to be honest. It's a tough one. There's the one. Uh, Keith Charles said, the game versus Liverpool at home, you missed a penalty with David James in goal. I was right behind the goal and James looked like he filled the goal. What was Mark's viewpoint of the O to step up take the penalty? Um, I can't remember that one, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think that one I, <laughs> I think I must have blocked that one out. Um, I'll have to have a look, look back at that one. I mean, it was 25 years, but um, I'm sure... Um, I'll have, to, I'll have to check up on that. But I ended up playing with David James, actually. Um, he ended up coming to Villa um, a bit later in my Villa career. And um, to be fair, it was an unbelievable uh, penalty, <laughs> penalty saver anyway. Um, but, yeah, I can remember missing a penalty on my debut for Newcastle, which was, um, you know, tough tough to take. It was, a you know, the Newcastle had a top side. Um, and it, I think it was live on Sky, my debut, and we got, we got run ragged a little bit and I missed a penalty. So... Um, after the game, you know, I'm thinking I've already made the right move here, um, but it all, it, all, it all worked out in the end. And I've got actually a question from one of your former teammates who's actually watching tonight, mate. Richard Smith, Drapes, legend. Oh. I love nights out. Tell Jules these days. Love to you, mate. <laughs> oh, Smudger, nice to see you, pal. Um, glad everything's going well with you, your career after football. Now, Smudger, well, I've got a funny story, actually. I mean, I think the first, I think we Smudger, the first, um, I think it must have been the first week in training. Obviously, I'm um, trying to impress and justify my price tag on flying around a little bit, and I think I ended up um, smash, uh, smashing Smudger. And uh, I look around and see a few of the lads' faces going, <laughs> <laughs> Bad idea, uh, and then obviously I went to re- uh, went on to realise how old Smudge was, and I don't think I I don't think I did it again. <laughs> Fair play. Uh, another question from Lex: What was it like being our record signing? Was there pressure on you that season? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely felt a bit of pressure. But like I said, I think I was at that point in my career where I was I was confident in myself, and um, like I say, it was a tough start. Um, Losing the first couple of games, and but I always, I always felt um, I was, I was play. I think I played um, pretty well most of the season. I never really let my confidence drop, and um, I knew it was um, a big price tag, and we've, we've got to try and stay in the league. So I, I felt the pressure, but I didn't really. I hopefully, didn't let it affect me. Uh, are you still in football in any ways at the moment now? Um, yeah, I run an under 19s academy at Nottingham University, which I've been doing for about five years. Um, the next teammates of mine from Aston Villa, David Norton. Um, it's it's under 19s. It's it's not a university side. It's it's um, it's similar to what Muzzy and Walsh were doing in Leicester with um, you know the lads who are not quite good enough to make it. They've got another two years playing football, and yeah, I thoroughly enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, what's the most units you ever drank with Walsh? Is it true you think he's a lightweight? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, to be fair, there was a few. Um, there were a few good drinkers in that squad them days. Uh, <laughs> a little bit, it's a little bit different. Different now. Um, I think it might have been a night out with Walsh one day when actually uh, the next day we were a bit worse for wear. I think it was when Ke- uh, Kevin McDonald was in charge, and I think me and Walsh weren't, weren't too clever in training. We, I think we were doing a shooting practice, and I think it, I think Kevin Mac just says. Um, <laughs> Go and get a shower and get yourself home. <laughs> I mean, back in the day, we all know there were drinking clubs. Uh, completely different to the way now football is. I mean, yeah. would you like to, you know, if you could have played nowadays to see what it's like, the pitches, I suppose, are 10 times better than like bowling greens compared to the, some of the you played on. Is it something you think I'd love to have the opportunity to have a go in the modern day game than, you know, when you played yourself? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But I mean, I, I love playing at the time I played. You know, some amazing characters and um, some great dressing rooms and team spirit. And you know, that was all part of it. Them days. I mean, we never, we never drank. Um, you know, 
two or three days before games. It was always at the right times. Um, and we were fit enough to, to be able to deal with it. You know, we weren't over the top. Like, um, you know, occasions you'd probably go a bit too far. But when I look back, some of the, when I look back at some of the uh, some of the footage and stuff, I mean, there's some fantastic sides of them days. And that, you know, the fitness levels to me, I don't think that much different. When you know, when you look at the top top Premier League teams from the nineties and um, the Man United and the Arsenal's, ah, ah. You know, it's a, it's a tough one to say which areas. I mean, you probably be a bit fitter, but they, you know, they were fit lads. There's a good question from Ben Morgan. A year ago, I drove people mad by saying I would have signed Ian Taylor from Villa. How do you think he would have got on in a Martin O'Neill's team? Um, yeah, Tails would have, Tails would have um, fit in any team really. He was, um, you know, he was 100 percent fit, fit as you like. You know, he had a bit of everything. Tails he'd score goals. Uh, he could win the ball back. He was up and down. You know, great, great teammate. Uh, like I said, I think Tails would have fitted in in most sides, to be honest. I mean, at the time, there were some very young, talented players. I think uh, Heskey was a very low part at the time. He must have been floating around. But Jochen had just broken into the team. I think yeah. I remember his goal in the FA Cup game was it Barnsley? Uh, Barnsley scored the outside of his foot. Yeah, uh, he, he was a quality player. I mean. When you came in and seen the youth, what was there? Did you feel impressed what they were trying to do at the club at the time, or is it just a case of trying to work with that? Yeah, I thought. Well, I think at the time, Emil was probably still an apprentice. Um, he was just sort of like not quite um, ready, even though he was the same size as he is as now. Um, he was just he was just sort of coming into the fringes of things, so he never really. Um, it was just probably a year too early for him, really. Um, Joe Jim, I mean, jockey, you know. He could have done anything really. I don't think he actually realised how, how good he could have been. You know, he was impossible. He was the fastest thing I've ever seen over 15, 20 yards. He was, he was unplayable on his day. When he was in the mood, he was unplayable. Um, but I think Joe just lacked a little bit consistent. I mean, he still had a really good career. But I think the ability and power and pace he had, you know, he, uh, you know I think he should have gone on, gone on to play for England. Um, but it didn't, didn't quite work out. But yeah, fr frightening on his day. Uh, no, what's the worst ground you've ever played at for facilities? <laughs> oh, God, that's a tough one. That's the worst ground. God. I think we ended up, I think we played at, um, I mean, I think I might be right, but I think it was, might have been Macclesfield um, ye years ago. And I think, um, I think we could hardly get the um, kit skips into the dressing room. It, it was that time. Uh, it was all, all concrete and it was just like going to like a Sunday morning game, really. When you uh, started out playing football, who was your football hero? Um, from very young, obviously being a Forest fan, um, my dad were a massive Forest fan, so I always used to watch watch them. Um, John Robertson, um, I still speak to Robbo now, legend. Um, you know, not not the, not the quickest, not the biggest or strongest, but absolutely um, an unbelievable talent. And I think he'd have played in any in any era. Both both footed, he could go both ways. Score goals, make goals. Um, I love Gaza, uh, even though he's only a little bit older than me. Um, obviously, when I was starting out, I was watching him play in Newcastle and in Tottenham. And like I say, he's the he's the most talented player I've ever seen in in England. Uh, Glenn Oddle as well. Um, he actually ended up signing me a few years later at, um, at Southampton, which was a which was a pleasure to work under him. Um, so yeah, them, them three players really. I mean, in a season of disappointment, relegation, uh, for you yourself, you, you you stood out in the crowd of players and you got an England call up from it. Uh, what was it like to get that first in call up and uh, how did you get the news? Um, I've been in a couple of, um, I've been called up to, um, I mean, are you talking about when I was actually at Leicester? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, when I was at Leicester, I've been called up to more of a couple of um, training camps and stuff. Um, um, amazing, really. Like I said, I'd come from literally from Notts County within um, within six months. I mean, I played England under twenty ones. I played a few caps uh, for the under twenty ones. So I was obviously in the thinking a little bit. Um, but the first sort of four or five months went personally well at Leicester, and yeah, I managed to get a call up, which was you know, which, which is the pinnacle of your career, really. Uh, Ross Howe says, "Best fans or atmosphere when playing football." <laughs> Best best fans, I think when um, 
when things are going really well, I think of the atmosphere in Newcastle, even though the, the days I was playing, the, the ground weren't as enclosed and there was still a couple of the corners were were open when when they were go when they were doing really well. Um, that, that place is absolutely rocking. I enjoyed Ivory. I, I like to play in Ivory and the old the old the old ground. It was a great atmosphere there. Um, I can remember playing there once. I think for, I think it was when um, Man United or Arsenal could have won the league and we were playing there for Villa. I think last game of the season. And I think Tottenham scored to go one 0 up at Old Trafford, and then the noise around Ivory for five minutes was just unreal. Um, I think Man United, Man United ended up winning the league that year. I think in the end. Uh, Jason says his first ever game I went to was LCFC versus Notts County at Fulwood Street, ninety two ninety three season. Mark scored for County. Can you remember that game, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Wow, well, I can briefly can brief remember scoring. Um, I think it was a bit of a tapping, to be fair, but it was always it's always a big game um, for Knots. Obviously, when you're playing any of the local sides like Derby, Forest, and Leicester, um, you know it was a really big game for us at the time in Knots County. So yeah, I remember that goal. I mean, your time at Leicester was a year, but what was it like to play at Fulham Street? I mean, it wasn't the most snazzy of grounds to come yeah. into the, the cow shed on the far side yeah. of you every now and then for the away fans, but it was very tight ground compared to some of the other grounds you would have played at. Did you feel like you should have had more of an advantage playing at home with being such tight to the pitch. Yeah, no, like I say, I love, um, uh, you know, Leicester a lot. Um, no disrespect to Notts County, but it's still a lot bigger club uh, than where I'd come from. So I, I, I loved it there. It was a great, um, it was a great move for me. Um, and I actually love playing there all the time. Uh, like I say, when I, when I do look back, it, it seemed, you know, I feel like I've been there for three or four years, even though it was a short time, but, no, fantastic. There's always a fantastic atmosphere there, especially when you're playing all the, all the top clubs. Like I say, I think with a bit more luck with injuries and maybe one or two more signings, would have would have would have stayed up. Uh, going on to more of the modern day football now. I mean, Keith, I just said, how do you rate the current Leicester City side and will they get in the top four? Um, I'm just looking at the score. Actually, still on one. <laughs> um, well, if it, if it's if it stays as it is now, I think it's in what's in their hands, obviously as well. Uh, like I said, I don't think if they did miss out, I don't think I don't think Leicester fans can be too harsh on the team. I think I think at the start of the season, I think you would have said you you're finishing fifth or sixth, they'd have, they'd have snapped your hand off. So I mean, it's been a magnificent season still, um, but obviously the way they started and the, the way they were playing before lockdown was was unreal. Um, they were scoring goals for fun, left from, from all all parts of the pitch, and for for some reason, whatever it is, they've just not come back. I mean, like I say. Man United came back, they were flying. Some some clubs have come back flying and some haven't. And unfortunately for Leicester, they've, they've just come back a bit flat and they've, they've struggled to get it going. But but they've still they've still um, got a chance of finishing fourth, which, which is unbelievable. I mean, yeah, at the beginning of the season, I think everyone would have snapped your hand off to be in that oh, yeah. top top five. It's, it's, it's just the way that probably since Christmas time, we started to slip a little bit. I mean, one thing from looking into Leicester being... I think it's a massive thing for England as well, is the amount of young English talents coming through the ranks. Uh, Hamza Trousery, Harvey Barnes, uh, James yeah. Madison. I mean, Madison especially, he's probably not had the season he wanted to after last year, but what, what do you rate him as an attacking forward player? Yeah, really like Madison. Um, played similar played, played similar to our, played a little bit, probably plays a little bit, a bit more advanced. But yeah, top player, um, you know, opens... Opens defences up, which is a top quality. Scores goals, comfortable on the ball, keeps the keeps the play moving all the time. He's a fit lad, works hard. Yeah, he's a top top player. I really like him. Um, and Barnes has done brilliant as well. I actually played with um, Harvey um, in Notts County. Like his dad, Paul. Paul was a top player as well. He had some horrific injuries. Played for Birmingham, and um, but he started his career in Notts County. And um, without without injuries, he'd have played at the top without that. I mean, yeah, Harvey Barnes for me came back from West Brom last year and uh, he started to get a few games in under Rodgers. But this year, I mean, takes and leaps and strides. I mean, he, he hasn't come back after lockdown being as consistent as he had been before it. But again, I suppose that's a young lad and sort of yeah. on, uh, any tips for being a professional going forward uh, on it. I mean, I suppose you starting out, it's all about getting game time. And Luke Thomas, who's played the last two games at left back for Leicester, a 19 year old. Again, yeah. I suppose it's all about getting that first few games under your belt, and if you make mistakes, moving on from them, is it? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think of those. I mean, I think it can go either way. I mean, some some young lads you put in and they, they, they just take to it straight away. Where some sort of find it a little bit difficult and uh, they need to maybe go back in the reserves for a bit and then they come back again. Um, so it's hard, it's, hard to, it's hard to tell how each individual, um, but you've just got to keep, keep going. I mean, every young player is going to get dropped and play in reserves and then you're back in. It's not very often you get a kid who comes in at, and plays regular from... 17, 18, um, you just keep believing in yourself, um, which is the number number one thing. You know, don't listen, don't listen. If you get a bit of stick, that's part and parcel of the game. You, you've got to learn to deal with that, and that's that's the mentality of the game's. You know, one of the the biggest thing really. Uh, one final question, and we'll ask you, mate. Uh, what for me, Brendan Rodgers has been. Uh, Fresh of fresh air at times. He may be a little bit stubborn on the way he plays football because it's very plan A. There's no plan B. But what do you think he's done? You know, coming in after Pure uh, left under a bit of a cloud and changed things around. How do you think he's done at the football club? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've not, I've not watched loads of games from last year, but I, um, they invited me down last year with the um, with, with the missus and the kids. I think it was 25 years last year since I signed. So. Uh, and the game was a bit flat, to be fair, um, with the previous manager. It, was, it looked a bit warm paced, and I came away thinking, you know, um, they just looked a bit, they just looked a bit um, lethargic and not much, not much spark in them. And I think Brendan came in and changed it around completely. Um, they, they had, they've got pace into the game. They're moving the ball quicker, uh, and, the, and the, they were. They were magnificent for the first sort of four or five months. Like I say, things have changed a little bit. They might have to, they might have to freshen things up a bit with a couple of signings. Because like I say, has gone a bit flat for the last two or three months. But to be fair, if they get in that Champions League spot, they'll, they'll, they'll get plenty of money to splash about. I think. Well. As I've got to say, and I think I'm Martha, thank you so much for coming tonight, Mark. It's been much appreciated for giving up your time to come on tonight. Yeah. Hopefully in the future we can get you back on and talk about the current letter situation, maybe after a Champions League game. But once again, thank you very much for coming on tonight, mate. Yeah, lovely. Thanks, really enjoyed it. Thanks, Tom. Cheers, mate. Thanks, bye. Trip. Again, thanks to you. The fans are coming on. Thanks for all your brilliant comments and questions as always for Mark. Uh, it's been a great show as always. Uh, I've just seen that Man United have drew 1-1 with West Ham tonight. So it's all in our hands going into Sunday's game. Uh, a win for Leicester guarantees us Champions League football for the season. A draw could even do that if Chelsea were to lose the next two games to Liverpool and uh, Wolves on the weekend. But it's for me, it's the players on Sunday now to turn, show up and uh, get that win over Man U and uh, really finish the season and push us into that Champions League spot. But as always, thank you for coming on tonight and uh, thank you to the sponsors. Cheers. Good night. Get on your feet!